Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Brumell. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell. To my side, I have our, um, let's see, we call you a senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Senior fellow? Oh. Senior fellow, Who doesn't Bonatti know how to turn a mic Institute. Up. <laughs> Very nice. Is that on your business card, Jeff? It is. It is. <laughs> At least you have business cards. I don't even have any yet. And the voice from beyond <laughs> is our executive producer, Ethan Euchre. How's everybody doing today? Thank you for being here. Thanks. Along with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti. Thanks for joining us. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the man of very few words. Yes, he is. Well, every week we talk to patients from the Benatti Spine Institute, and they tell us that they're that we actually succeed where others fail because they come to us after having received uh, failed treatment elsewhere. And I didn't listen to my own um, <laughs> advice, advice about turning, turning off my ringer, so I do apologize. <laughs> You know, live radio, baby. <laughs> always happens. <laughs> anyway, um, the thing that sets the Bonatti spine procedures apart is the fact that they actually get to the root of somebody's problem. And so, pe so many people come to us after having been to other doctors that are supposedly at the top of their league, and they're told basically that only invasive procedures are going to be helping them. So we've heard people talking about how either they were slit open in the front and down the back and, and they have screws and plates and those things just cause many issues. Well, we don't do that here at the Bonatti Spine Institute. There's a lot of imitators and a lot of hacks out there, a lot of hack jobs. Yeah. And uh, luckily, Dr. Bonatti, knows how to fix most of those problems yes. too. So, and he didn't follow just typical textbook uh, procedures. He actually set out to develop his own methods and instrumentation that have brought relief to uh, many thousands of people. So mm -hmm. with that being said, on today's show, we have Kendra Turner from Tennessee and her attorney, Jeremy Dice. And that has to do with the girl that said, bless you, and then was uh, suspended for saying so. It's a big and First Amendment case. That's, uh, I know it got yeah. Doc fired up last weekend, so um, went ahead and actually got her attorney as well as mm -hmm. uh, Kendra herself, mm -hmm. the student, to come on and, and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So it should be good. It should, and then we're going to hear about what's new in American medicine today, but up first. In today's Back to Life segment, we will talk to a patient of the Bonatti Spine Institute who went from living a life that was restricted by pain and discomfort through their journey of finding the Bonatti Spine Institute and are now living pain-free. And with that being said, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Greg Spadaro, and he is calling us from Vero Beach, so thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, thank you. So why don't you tell us how your pain started? Was it something degenerative in nature, or was it an accident that uh, spawned your back problems? Well, my pain uh, is actually in my neck, and okay. it started from a car accident that happened, uh, well, now it's 19 years ago, but I came to see Benadi a couple of years ago to get the problem corrected. Okay. My wife and I were sitting at a stop sign um, waiting for the light to change, and unfortunately the Older gentleman behind us um, never saw the light, mm. hit our car at about 50 miles an hour, wow. and um, we were both thrown over our seatbelts. And at the time of the accident, um, we thought we were fine. We didn't think that there was any problem. About six months later, both my wife and I were both having pretty substantial neck problems. Right. And unfortunately, over the years, as we you know, visited different doctors, whether they were orthopedic doctors, neurosurgeons, or neurologists, um, had a series of tests done like MRIs and, and things like that. Um, we we're basically told that, yeah, we see some degenerative things in your neck. However, we don't see anything that, uh, you know, we could fix surgically. So, um, you know, I would say over the 17 years or many times where we both went in for epidural injections, that would work for a small period of time. Right. And then, you know, it, it would seem like all the, the symptoms would come back. We went through many rounds of physical therapy, I went to chiropractors, um, and then finally, you know, doctors looked at you and said, well, maybe you should just be on medications. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, that was just unacceptable. So um, it, it, was, it was a long battle until I met Mr. Uh, Dr. Bonatti. Fifteen years mm -hmm. of discomfort, pain, and what sounds like severe pain. Mm -hmm. It was, I wouldn't say it was severe, severe. It was, it was 
more of an annoying pain between my spine and my uh, on my right side between my spine and my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it would go down my arm, but really, were you know the problem with the pain was that when I went to bed at night, those muscles were never at rest. So, mm-hmm. you know. In the beginning, it was, you know, I could sleep six hours a night, then it went down to five hours, then it went down to three hours. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at a certain point, you know, quality of life, you know, when you're not getting enough sleep, was getting lower and lower and lower. So, you know, I was really running out of options until a friend of mine at work looked at me and she said, look, you really should go see the Bonatti Spine Institute and told me a little bit about it. Her husband had gone to see Dr. Bonatti and uh, had a pretty severe neck problem, mm-hmm. had a couple of operations, came back, and... He was back to normal, and, you know, of course, I thought, well, here's just the next thing. I mean, after 17 years of visiting doctors and having different types of treatments, right. I thought, well, how is this really going to be any different? But I thought I would give it a chance. So, you're, so, you're, I came to visit. so your hopes weren't so, very high that, uh, that even if you came uh, to see Dr. Bonatti and the, and the folks at the Bonatti Spine Institute, uh, given your previous history of seeing a bunch of other medical, quote-unquote, experts, your, uh, your hopes weren't very high that they'd be able to help you out? Uh, they, they were not. I mean, uh, you know, considering I, I thought I had looked at every different option in the world, mm-hmm. um, I thought, well, you know, what makes this so different and how come it's not, not as mainstream as it, as it should be? Um, I just didn't think that a, a, a minor operation could, could start to take away the pain. And, uh, but I did feel good. And in talking to Dr. Bernardi and, you know, he was less interested in the MRIs and everything else. He just wanted to talk to me about what are my symptoms, where am I feeling the pain. And based on what I was talking about, uh, he was really able to kind of isolate and look and say, Greg, your problem is at this level mm-hmm. on this side, and these are the things that I can do to help you. Um, he had suggested at the time, you know, Greg, you really need probably three operations to get uh, your problem fully corrected. And uh, I was skeptical, so I said, well, I said, where do you think the most severe is? And he told me where it was. And he said, let's, I said, well, I said, I'll give you a chance. I said, let's try that one first. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went through that operation. And even on the operating table, you know, he'd ask me questions like, Greg, can you feel this in your right arm and that? And kind of testing, you know, where the nerve pain was going. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can tell on the operating table that he was in the right spot. Um, when I finally kind of came out of the anesthesia, um, I knew that he had helped me. So that's, Greg, that's what drove me to say, okay, I need the second and the third operation. And that's another thing that we should point out, Greg, is that uh, a lot of folks don't realize that uh, Dr. Bonatti uses the conscious IV mm-hmm. sedation. So you, you know, you're not feeling any pain, but you're awake uh, during the procedure mm-hmm. for the exact reason that you just said, so that the doctor can communicate with you, ask you questions, try to pinpoint exactly uh, where that pain is. So uh, after this first procedure, you already felt a difference in, in the pain? Definitely, definitely. And I, I would say to people that if you know if they're nervous about being somewhat awake during the during the operation, I would say not to be because really it's not like you're feeling any pain. It's not like you really know that somebody's actually doing something to you. It's just a matter of um, it's just a matter of that you're aware that you're aware of the questions that are being asked and you're aware of uh, the pain the pain that. Uh, the pain that you that you had, like in your arm or your leg or whatever, mm-hmm. so um, I wouldn't be nervous about that part of it. But fair to say, you're very relaxed during the procedure. Definitely, definitely relaxed. And, and so, Greg, you decided to go back and, and have the other three done. I had the other two done after that. Yes. Okay. Over the and, course uh, of, of how long? How long did you space these out? Was it all kind well, of pretty I mean, soon? I, I think it depends on the patient. I've sent uh, since I've gone there. I've sent uh, quite a few patients to Dr. Bernardi, <laughs> and you know, one of my friends here who had a problem in his neck, he decided to have three operations within a two-week period of time because he decided to take the time off and take a few days in between each operation and and get the whole thing completed at once. And he did very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I decided to take a few months between each operation. So I would say, you know, it was probably over a six or seven month period of time that I had all three operations completed. Mm -hmm. How quickly were you able to return to (coughs) your normal activities? Well, I could return to my normal activities the way I felt. Mm -hmm. I never had to take a pain pill. I never had to take any sort of supplement after the, Mm -hmm. after any of the operations. Um, for any type of discomfort. There really was no pain whatsoever. Um, I returned, I'll tell you this, I remember 
the first operation. It was, I think, on a Wednesday or a Thursday. I came, I was home by that Friday, and by Monday morning I was back in work. Now, I do have a desk job, but mm -hmm. I do a lot of walking, and I do a lot of, uh, it's a very active job in terms of, in terms of what I do all day long, and uh, had no problem at all. Uh, in terms of other activities, I felt like I could go back to the gym and do all the things I normally do. Mm -hmm. However, I listened to the advice of Dr. Bernardi and, and <laughs> he idea. says, you know, don't lift, lift more than five pounds for the first six weeks mm -hmm. and all that. So I followed, I followed the rules, but honestly, on the inside, I felt like I could do anything. So, Greg, take us to, this, is, uh, two, this was two years ago, correct? Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? Still pain-free? How are you doing? On the right-hand side, I'm doing fine. All of the discomfort I had between my shoulder, between my spinal cord and my shoulder is gone. Uh, the most important thing, I would say, is that I'm sleeping eight hours a night. Fantastic. I could not before. Those muscles were always, always tense. They felt like they, they never settled down. <laughs> now they're calm. Everything is pretty well back to normal on the right-hand side. Well, that's fantastic, and we actually have Dr. Benatti in studio, so if there's anything that you'd like to say uh, to him, he is sitting here. Well, of course, Dr. Benatti, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say thank you. <laughs> I mean, I know I doubted uh, that a lot of this could actually be true and that it could be fixed this easily. Um, I just wish I had met you uh, 17 years earlier. <laughs> well, thank you very much to be with us. Uh, I... They always put me in a bad position, <laughs> but I I really enjoyed talking to you. Good, good. Appreciate and it, Greg. I, and I know a lot of the people that I've sent there, um, you know, from we have a test pilot here that works at, at the same company I do, the, the, the purchasing uh, manager that I, I sent there. Uh, there's a, a teacher at my life school. Every one of these people have a story mm -hmm. that is very similar to mine. They're all doing well. Uh, if they're not completely healed yet, it just means that they need further treatment. But mm -hmm. um, they're all on the road to recovery. So uh, I will say that what you're doing over there is very good. I wish uh, we can kind of duplicate you and put you in more places around <laughs> the United States because, really, I don't think people realize that there are, there are solutions to their problems. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, sir. I think, tra I think traditional medicine, from what I learned over 17 years of meeting all these doctors, is that um, they really only address very evasive things. So unless you're, you know, crawling into their office on all, you know, on, on all fours, just, you know, in complete pain, they don't really have a solution for you. And for the people that fall somewhere in the middle that are in discomfort, like I was, and um, their quality of life is going down, but they're not bad enough to be, to have an evasive procedure, I think that uh, what you provide is tremendous. Thank you. All right. Well, we appreciate it, Greg. Another uh, successful back to life story and uh, continued pain free living, my friend. Have a great day. Thanks for joining Take us. Take care and right. thank you. You too. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Greg. Love hearing those stories. If people are themselves suffering pain, how do they get in touch, Kimberly? Well, they can always reach out to the Bonatti Spine Institute at 855 267 0483 or they can visit us on the website at bonatti.com. After the break, we're going to hear from Dr. Aaron Fishman. He has a minimally invasive procedure called a microwave tumor ablation, which can heat and destroy deadly cancer cells in less than an hour. We just call it the tumor zapper. Tumor <laughs> zapper, yes. Yeah. You'll hear more coming up after the break. You're listening to News Radio 970, WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair, 
at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone, I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs>
uh, meaning p- patients don't have to get general anesthesia for this procedure mm-hmm. uh, in many instances and can actually do this procedure with just uh, either propofol or, uh, or, or a morphine derivative. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really a, a, major, uh, a, a major advantage of doing percutaneous ablation um, in general. And then, and then lastly, patients can go home the same day. Uh, that's really something that's, that's incredible about this procedure is they can literally uh, go home with, with no incision um, and recover at home, which is really a great thing. And my patients uh, really think that's one of the major advantages of this procedure. Did you take any, any type of a um, procedure to a metastatic problem, like, for example, a... It, it metastatic problem on the on on the brain or something like that. So d- I guess the question is, can we do this procedure for metastatic cancers in the kidney, or is it, or would the or do you mean can you do this outside of the of the kidney? I, that- I'm talking about outside the kidney because the 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 the, the beauty of this procedure that you are describing is to try to attack the progressive problem of another in other in other organs sure. one of the major trouble is the brain sometimes when you have a, a you have a tumor in the lung and through metastasis on the on the brain and and the patient becomes practically affected directly on the brain more than the problem with the lung and if you can destroy that that tumor uh, that metastasis on the brain you can recover the patient for a longer period of time do you have do you have that type of idea well, that's a really good question. We've been doing microwave ablation on other organs, particularly the liver. Um, I do a lot of liver ablation as well for both primary and metastatic lesions to the liver. As you know, the liver is a critical organ, and anytime you have a metastasis or a primary cancer in the liver, uh, that can be very serious. So we, 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 we tackle those as well with microwave. We also do uh, microwave ablation in the lung uh, for non-operable lung cancer, and um, we've had good results with that. Do you ever in terms of the brain, uh, that's not something that we typically do. Um, is it possible? Uh, I would say that there, there is a potential to use microwave ablation all over the body, um, even in bone lesions, people that have uh, bone tumors. Um, we've been able to do that as well. That's uh, fantastic. The brain is a little bit different just because we really worry uh, a, a little bit more in the brain about uh, ablating normal areas because, again, we want to try to keep uh, the ablation zone small but we want to also get a good margin. So did you ever, it's a little did trickier you, in the brain to do that. Did you ever try to use, for example, a homium laser uh, to ablate uh, the a tumor? People have used lasers, in the, uh, particularly in the liver, yeah. um, in the past, but we tend, to, we tend to find that now with the current technology, microwave is really ideal for, for liver and kidney and lung because um, it really allows you to get great ablation with blood vessels that are surrounding it. Oftentimes when we try to ablate structures that are near blood vessels, we don't get a complete ablation because the flowing blood actually dissipates the heat from the uh, procedure. And so microwave is really well suited for overcoming that uh, based on the technology. So we we, we prefer to use microwave now for that reason. Um, And now that we have such good technology and our needles are so small and able to generate so much more power than they did in the past, we can even tackle much larger lesions than we would would have previously. I have a question, though. With the use of microwave, is there any uh, problem with radiation? Are there any side effects from that? No, there are no radiation side effects. Okay. You can get side effects from damaging normal tissue that's surrounding the tumor, but again, that's more uh, related to the technical aspect of how to actually perform the ablation safely, not necessarily related to technology. So there really is no specific radiation associated with the ablation itself. Sometimes we do the procedure uh, with ultrasound guidance mm-hmm. to help guide the needle into the tumor. Other times we use it, uh, we do the procedure with CAT scan guidance, which does involve um, using x-rays to guide the needle, but that's really the same as having a, you know, a standard CAT scan of the abdomen. Well, it's very fascinating stuff, Dr. Fishman, and I know Doc Doc Bonatti had uh, a couple of other other questions as well. Oh, I need to talk to you about this. This is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, we'll get we'll get you on again. We're up against the clock, mm-hmm. though. But uh, again, Dr. Aaron Fishman, Assistant Professor of Radiology and Surgery at Mount Sinai Hospital up in good old NYC. Appreciate you joining us on American Medicine Today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. We'll book you on the television show coming up. Okay. A- absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Doctor. All right. Amazing technology advancements. Hey, you know that this that's incredible what we can do with this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah. He's, he's showing a sign for what we call wrapping because we're up we against a break. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, if you need to reach out for your back to the Bonatti Spine Institute, 855-267-0483 or Bonatti.com. Coming up after the break, we're going to have Kendra Turner and Jeremy Dice coming up to explain what has happened since her bless you comment. You're listening to News Radio 970 WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel a hundred percent better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone, I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain, I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery, it was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing, it's fantastic. It definitely works, I mean I really don't know what else to tell you, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thank you for joining us on American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Hello. <laughs> we have our executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Glad to be here as always. And senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Howdy, howdy. All right. Well... Um, last week, we were already discussing uh, what happened in Tennessee with Kendra Turner and her attorney, Jeremy Dice, um, and he is senior counsel from Liberty Institute, Restoring Religious Liberty in America. So with that being said, they are both joining us on the phone. Uh, yeah, just a quick synopsis if people missed this story. Oh, yes, um, the sneeze. Yeah, basically, uh, well, mm -hmm. we'll let Jeremy tell, tell the story. Tell us what happened with Kendra, why she was suspended, how it became uh, such a big debacle mm -hmm. and a First Amendment issue. Well, sure, Ethan, and thanks for having us here today. But it's a pretty simple story, really. Uh, someone sneezed in class, and, and Kendra Turner uh, did what most people would do. They, uh, She said, bless you, rather quietly and mm -hmm. almost under her breath, and uh, that turned into something of a classroom discussion because the classroom teacher had told uh, the class and had actually written on the board that you can't say the words bless you during class. Mm -hmm. Those were banned words in that classroom and you weren't allowed to say them. And when uh, the students kind of pushed back and said, well, wh what's, the, what's the problem here? Why can't you say bless you? You know, our faith has taught us to be kind and courteous to people. Mm -hmm. Why can't we say bless you as that common courtesy that we have, that hospitality that we want to show? Mm -hmm. uh, 
what, why, why is that a problem? And uh, it ended up being a kind of a discussion on religious liberty, and the teacher said, look, you can't have, in her words, godly speaking in my classroom. <laughs> and uh, then she kicked Kendra out of her class, sent her down to the principal. The principal there basically reaffirmed what had just happened, said, look, we can't have you talking about religion in the classroom, and then sent her to, uh, for the rest of the period, which is a block period, a uh, mm-hmm. long period, put her into an in-school suspension for the remainder of that period while they kind of sorted things out. Unreal. And so the bottom line, Kendra was kicked out of class for blessing another student. For being polite. You know, yeah. she they're, they're lucky I wasn't there, because I was always taught to say, God bless you. Mm-hmm. That would have really That's been a scandal. That's godly talk. Yeah, just <laughs> something what, what, uh, courtesy. Wow. Mr. Dines, why don't you tell us what's the name of the teacher? Well, you know, look, I, I think the, the focus is not so much on the teacher. I think her name was Mrs. Kindle or something to that effect. I think that's been out there in many different effects or different mm-hmm. places here. But the focus is not so much on her, but how we got to this point. The, yes. the teacher was probably just the result of 30, 40 years of these angry atheists and mm-hmm. secularists that were so intent on pushing uh, any type of religion, any mention of religion in the schools, out of the schools itself. And mm-hmm. so now we've gotten to the point where you can't even say, bless you, or God bless you, to a fellow mm-hmm. student when they sneeze. Mm-hmm. I, I think we all can recognize that this is just a silly point to be in, but it is the end result of what you get when for decades we have this false notion of separation of church and state pounded into us at school, and uh, secularists and atheists threatening school district after school district with litigation if they let uh, people in the schools mention religion at all. Mm -hmm. That's not the First Amendment. That's not what our Founding Fathers laid out for us so many years ago, and it's not good for our society at all. I don't believe so either. I want to ask Kendra this because we do have Kendra on the phone. Um, Are you a disruptive, aggressive student as they tried to to, uh, portray you in 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 the media, Kendra? No, sir. I believe that I was taught to be respectful in every possible way I can, and that's what I tend to do. How did it make you feel when this occurred? Mm, it, uh, it upset me because, I mean, I've never really been in trouble. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're you're one of these... questions. So you're not one of these students, Kendra, that is disruptive in class and, and things like that. You're, you sound like a very no, re- respectful young lady. How have, uh, how have things sort of changed at school? Are you treated differently by the other students now? Do they have your back? Um, how, are, how are things at, uh, on campus? Um, I switched to homeschool because I was getting threats and stuff. Ooh. From other students? Just from different students. Wow. Really? So where's where's that at? I mean, uh, I'm sure there is still litigation involved with uh, mm-hmm. with Jeremy Dice, who is also on the phone uh, and is the attorney. Um, is that something that's going to become a part of this whole this whole suit, Jeremy? Is the fact that she hasn't even returned to that school yet? Well, she just she's been she was back at the school for a few days, but it turned into such a, a circus with some students that wanted to exact their pound of flesh for. Uh, you know, exercising a religious liberty that it became just too much for for Kendra, and I think they, as a family, made the right decision mm-hmm. to just simply pull back right now and let's make sure we take care of our family, where we can certainly mm-hmm. practice our religious liberty at home, and uh, and learn there as well. So, you know, she exercised that choice, and that's fine. It's, it's mm-hmm. regrettable, terribly regrettable, mm-hmm. that the school has uh, allowed it to get to such a point where they've kicked a student out for saying "bless you." Mm-hmm and then let things run so much that the, the fellow students, this day and age, were so concerned about bullying and mm-hmm. harassment. Mm-hmm. Now they've allowed her to be so terribly bullied and harassed that she's had to go and withdraw from the school itself. What, what, you know, that's an unfortunate reality where we find ourselves here today. I want to find out, did, was anything done to the students that were threatening her? Because, like you said, yeah, it's I, I don't have that information, uh, But we do know that the mm-hmm. school has basically said, look, uh, the, 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 they admitted that these words were definitely on the board. Mm-hmm. They have actually taken those off the board now mm-hmm. and made it clear that uh, that's not something that you're allowed to do at this school, right. uh, is to ban that category of religious speech. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think we can see that as a, as a victory, that, uh, th- yes. that this, this situation, though unfortunate for Kendra, mm-hmm. uh, has certainly gone on, and, and I'm proud of her for sticking up for her religious liberty. It's gone yes. on to allow other students to have more and greater religious liberty not only in um, in Dyersburg there, mm-hmm. but you know I've heard from people across the country on this issue. Even here, where I live locally, I've had uh, the classroom discussions have been going on about this case, mm-hmm. in which they've all been not only shocked that someone would be kicked out for simply yes. blessing another student uh, at an appropriate time, 
but uh, then they're kind of going, hey, what, what kind of religious liberty do I have? And so Kendra's case is going to go down in the history of this country, and in Dyersburg in particular, of, of standing up for religious liberty mm -hmm. at a time when religious liberty is on the wane. Jeremy, something that seems just outrageous, frankly, is it's not like Kendra was in school trying to organize prayer. It wasn't like she was sign showing the sign of the cross when the student um, sneezed. To me, it's not even a question of, of religious liberty. It was just common courtesy that she said, bless you. And how, how that turns from the teacher to religion. That, that kindness, that courtesy flows out of her faith. Her parents have taught her that from an early age. Uh, her church has taught her that that's a, a kind thing to do. But then, you know, bless you, look, we, we can all quickly acknowledge that this isn't exactly, you know, ISIS beheading Christians in Iraq, but at the same time, if left unchecked, mm -hmm. what we heard from her teacher and then was affirmed by the principal was that you can't have any religious speaking in school. Well, that is false, and that's unlawful. Uh, students across this country, even those two examples that you just used, Ethan, uh, students can do that while they're at school. They have every right to be able to do so. We expect our students to follow the reasonable rules of the classroom. And the school here could have just said, no talking during class. But they specifically barred the phrase, bless you, which is a very common religious term, and especially in the South, is very used for a lot of different circumstances, not just for when someone sneezes. Yes. But we expect our students to follow those reasonable rules. It's unreasonable, though, to eliminate a viewpoint with which you disagree. And because of that, not only do we believe our students should follow the reasonable rules, we believe that the adults in the situation ought to follow the rules that are imposed upon them via the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And that's where they've gone wrong here. They've violated uh, Kendra's civil rights by simply eliminating a category of speech with which they just simply disagree. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Jeremy, question for Kendra. Kendra, does the school have a football team? Yes, sir. Prior to those games, or mm -hmm. even worse, if during the course of the game um, a player gets hurt, is it forbid for the players on their own, not organized by the school, to pray prior to the game, or so many times when you see a player go down, both members of both teams will gather midfield, kind of say a prayer for that mm -hmm. gentleman who got hurt. Take a knee. Is that forbid in your school district? I'm, I'm not sure. Have you ever it's seen it happen at the example. school? Uh, it's interesting to use that example, you think, because that kind of thing just happened in uh, near Orlando in Seminole County where the quarterback went down with an injury and his entire team went around him and prayed for him. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you believe it, the next day the uh, some angry atheist group sent a letter condemning these students for praying for their fallen comrade mm -hmm. as if that was some sort of egregious violation of the Constitution. This is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. For the last 30, 40 years, we've had these groups that have been demanding the, the removal of any semblance of religious anything within the school system to the point now where I wouldn't be terribly surprised. I mean, look, if someone could get kicked out for saying, bless you, out of class, what's going to happen? Are we going to have principals telling the football coach they've got to take the Hail Mary mm -hmm. out of the playbook? I mean, we're really getting to the point of being absurd now. You know, Mr. Dice, I, I would think that these atheists that are out there that are dead set against any religious beliefs and so completely offended, they should really start their own school system. And that way, they don't have any issues whatsoever, and there will be no prayer there. <laughs> That's right. Look, until they do, the First Amendment protects students like Kendra mm -hmm. and others across this country mm -hmm. to be able to express their religion in their homework, in their schoolwork, in their tests, during classroom discussions, before, during, and after school, mm -hmm. so long as it does not disrupt the educational environment of the school itself. Uh, and in this situation, simply blessing someone quickly when they're sneezing while they're working together at their computer, mm -hmm. I mean, clearly the, that's not an interruption of the educational environment. What is an interruption of the educational environment is a teacher rocketing out of her desk to confront someone who was kind towards another student yes. and send that student out of her class for simply blessing another student. It, it's gotten to the point of being absolutely silly. Well, Jeremy, we're almost out of time. Uh, did you have a, a comment, Doc? I kind of just wanted to find out where we're at today and where yes. we're moving forward. Is there going to be a monetary suit, a civil suit, anything like that? Uh, did you have something that you wanted to add, Doc? Well, I, uh, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a very aggressive personality. Uh, I, I really think this is not, uh, I, I think we are tackling this thing in a very kind and, and, and legal and elegant way. I really think I, if I will be, if I will be involved, I will be a parent of the, of Kendra, 
I will demand that this teacher will be removed mm -hmm. and the and the um, principal or the assistant principal who was involved with this one to be removed the school. Mm -hmm. If that type of it, action is being mm -hmm. taken and I will force that that thing happen. So that's the only way these people will learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you, if the, the student was removed from the school, I want that teacher to be removed from teaching. Mm -hmm. And if that situation is equal, then I will have some, some, some response. The people will respect the Constitution. But if we continue being nice and applying the law and, and playing a nice field all the time, we will be defeated all the time. You need to kick these people out of the system and you need to keep them as brutal as they are mm -hmm, absolutely all right well we're out of time jeremy um we'll we'll keep uh, in touch with you and kendra of course to get the latest on this case uh, i'm sure it's it's nowhere near over correct well i, I think we're probably got to the point where we're going to get to right now the school has admitted that they've made the mistake that they have uh, removed the bless you from the banned list if you will mm -hmm. and uh, right now we're, we're their their actions are in sort of their words are in support of student religious liberty we're going to watch to make sure that their actions match their words and if not uh, then we're certainly happy to uh, to advise our client of her rights in federal court sounds good jeremy dice from the liberty institute as well as kendra turner appreciate your time kendra thank you very much and good luck with everything okay Thank you. All You're right. Welcome. Thanks, Jeremy. We'll be in touch, okay? Mm -hmm. All right now. Bye. See you later. Bye. -bye. You know, the, the other point, I'm going to bring up bullying. Bullying. Mm -hmm. Life threats to her. I bet, I bet if we look into it, those students are still there, mm -hmm. which I find extremely repulsive. Agreed. That they kicked her out for saying, bless you, but then you have death threats and, and they're allowed to remain in. Again, we'll follow up on it. We will. Um, if you or someone you know is suffering with neck, back, or sciatic pain, feel free to reach out to the Benati Spine Institute, 855-267-0483 or Benati.com. Coming up after the break, we're going to see what's new in American medicine today. You're listening to News Radio 970, WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benati created, perfected, and patented the Benati Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benati invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benati Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benati succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone, I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain, I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery, it was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing, it's fantastic. It definitely works, I mean I really don't know what else to tell you, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benati created, perfected, and patented the Benati Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benati invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. 
So successful are the Bonatti Spine procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Burmell. Thank you for continuing to listen to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Burmell, joined by executive producer Ethan Euchre, our senior fellow Jeff Wackstaff, and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Well, it's that time. Let's look at what's new in medicine today, featuring Alfred Bonatti, MD. So, Dr. Bonatti, why don't you talk about um, a big lie about Obamacare and drug prices? Well, uh, remember all this uh, beautiful thing that was advertised in the Obamacare? Mm -hmm. the drugs are going to be almost free for everybody. Mm -hmm. Free well, drugs for everybody? Yeah. No Whoa. wonder I had so much support. That's, yeah. it. <laughs> that's, that's what they advertise Sorry, now. Cancer. Uh, the price of the prescription drugs, mm -hmm. uh, they were practically saying that they're going to be at a very affordable pr price. Correct. Well, guess what? Like everything in this world, <laughs> politicians in the middle, mm -hmm. they, they manufacture uh, something that the rest of the population is going to suffer with. Yes. Well, the politicians sit in the in, in the quiet places, mm -hmm. and what they did is they listened to the uh, pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. and the price that they was set in the Obamacare to get drugs at an affordable price for the Americans, forget it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't exist. So what they did is they negotiate no cut on the prices for the drugs <laughs> for Obamacare. So you're going to be paying the same or more money for the drugs. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is going to be that the, the individuals that they need the drugs are going to be paying in an affordable price for drugs or they're going to go bankruptcy. On, on the acquisition of the drugs. Some of the drugs are going to cost you around $6,700 more a year mm -hmm. for the drug that you need, to com you need to consume. Now, they are around 50 million of Americans that they are not taking their medication mm -hmm. because they cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, or they're taking the medication partially mm -hmm. because they're taking one medicine or and trying to make it, they, 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 they feel they're going to make the thing last if they right. take it. What they are creating with that is resistance if they are taking antibiotics mm -hmm. or they are not taking any medication that is effective. Uh, so they are not only losing their money, but at the same time, they're creating a chronic pro problem right. on, the, on the illnesses that they have. Mm -hmm. Now, they are predicted that there are 125,000 people that they are going to die next year because they cannot afford the drugs. That's mm -hmm. unreal. 125,000 people are going to die just because they can't afford medication that was supposed to be... Part of the affordable. Making Correct. it affordable. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's impossible because I distinctly recall President Obama... <laughs> Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, okay. and the whole gang up at Capitol Hill telling us that health care would be available for everyone, daisies would be growing in the streets, and the price of drugs was going down. Mm -hmm. Not that case. hasn't happened? That, that's all part of what I like to call Barack's crock. <laughs> well, unfortunately, nothing of the Obamacare is real. Obamacare said... <gasps> it's a real going, failure. It's well, a real failure. <laughs> but it's not only a failure. They said to you that your doctor is going to be your doctor. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. That your, your health care is going to be your health care is mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. Now that we learn that the drugs, that they're supposed to be cheaper, they are not going to be. Uh, <laughs> well, the, if we continue mm -hmm. digging on this thing, I don't understand how it's possible 
that the political system can survive selling us all these lies mm -hmm. because you know I know that the Democrats are the one that create the mess right but you know the Republicans also jump on the on the same bandwagon here mm -hmm. and and they don't they don't respect their 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 beliefs mm -hmm. they uh, I I'm very confused I I am an individual who feel uh, that I am conservative right but at the same time I I I feel that the impulse the desire of the country is to try to protect the people to give us good medicine mm -hmm. good life but the only thing that the democrats do is they they prey on on disasters mm -hmm. they prey on 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 anything that they do is just only directed to obtain votes mm -hmm. and when they do that they they usually do in the wrong way mm -hmm. they when they talk about women they talk about sex so they are only the whole concept for the democrats mm -hmm. is we're going to give to all the girls medications so they can get pregnant mm -hmm. or they can stop pregnancy right well or they can have free abortions mm -hmm. they're but, the ones that really have the war on women yeah. well exactly mm -hmm. But when they talk about other things, when they talk about medicine, that is so sacred in this country. We need to protect medicine. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that they do is they offer to you lies. And the ignorance, they, they, believe, them. they believe this. And the next thing that happens is they found themselves in a worse situation. Because you know something? A rich people always will be able to afford whatever they need. And or they will have some type of a solution for mm -hmm. but the poor they don't right and this is the group that the democrats they always say that they're going to protect but this is the group that is constantly suffer right. by the actions of the democrats mm -hmm. and then i don't understand why the people continue working on that so i am so confused with the jewish population the Jewish population are Democrats. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this. They, 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 are, they are attacking uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. They are creating problems with, with, with the Jewish population. And still the Jewish population vote for Democrats. Mm -hmm. I really think something is wrong with the information that get to these groups. Mm -hmm. And that's a look at what's new in medicine today with Alfred Benati, MD. What you said is extremely important, and I want people to know it's not just Dr. Benatti's uh, version of what's happening, but Mint Press News, October of 2013, states these facts. Newsmax, March of 2013. The Blaze, December of 13. Freedom Outpost, March of 14. Huffington Post, April of 14. And ABC News as as of December 13th. We have actual so, sources. It's yes. not just, hey, this crazy doctor is coming up with things off the exactly. top of his head. No, this is legitimate mm -hmm. facts and news. If you are watching, you can tweet at Dr. Benatti or hashtag American Medicine Today. If you or someone you know is suffering in pain, reach out to the Benatti Spine Institute, 855-267-0483 or Benatti.com. Make sure to check your local listings on Fox Business on weekends because we're there, as well as locally, ABC 28, WFTS, Saturday evening. 7:30. We'll see you next week on News Radio 970 WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti spine procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. 
I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done, and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain-free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs>